What's up, guys? My name is Teo. I am your host. Welcome to Logmat's Creative Circle. I am joined with a beautiful guest today. Oh, thank you, man. What's your name? That. Tell them, sir. Uh, I'm Juan Bino. My friends call me Bino. You know that. They don't know that. Um, yeah, I'm an artist from Orlando, Florida. I make Mac Miller, Frank Ocean, Khalid type vibes. So if you like that sort of thing, check out my stuff. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the intro sounded practiced. Right? It, <laughs> eh, it, not really. Not really. Not really. Oh, okay, okay, really. okay. I was like, good. But you did really good. It's Thanks. genuine, authentic. <laughs> I like the authenticity. Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, that's something I like about you. You're very, you know, you're a cool person in front of the camera or with that no camera thanks bro appreciate yeah, it i definitely respect that yeah as soon as the cameras turn on i feel some type of way though i'm like <laughs> what's my best angle bro is the lighting hitting but um I feel, yeah let me roll like that low-key mm. so I, I made some notes for this okay. a podcast because you know i'm track prepared bro organized prepared yo the studio like you hella studious i appreciate you <laughs> i appreciate you i try my best yeah, yeah yeah we actually had a little inconvenience as soon as i started like talking i was like <gasps> and then boom the lights went off so yeah. this is the take two but so far, the lights have not gone out. We're doing good so far. So, so far, so good. How are you guys? Bro! So, tell me how you started making music, bro. How I started making music. Yeah. Um, man. Was, you know, just bringing it all over. God, back. I haven't talked about my story in a while. Um, I, uh, I mean, I grew up singing, loved singing. Uh, super ADD, ADHD kid. And I was singing all the time at home. And my mom was like you can't be doing that shit here. Mm. Like, we're going to take you to church. So I started singing in a choir, like a majority of people. And so I started singing in church. Uh, I I was a little, yeah. Uh, I did that for a while. Loved that. Got into acting through that way. How old were you when you got into acting? Into acting. Middle school. Um, Oh, dang, bro. So you started singing at, like... Bro, I started singing... Well, I loved singing when I was, like, five. Like, I didn't get into, like, my real music career until, like, four and a half years ago. Okay. Um, But, yeah, no, I, I... so my track was, I loved singing, went to church, mm-hmm. got into like acting, started doing all that, um, pursued that for quite a while, went to college for it. I went in uh, wow. BFA in acting. Uh, Where is that school? In? Uh, UF, University of Florida. Okay. So I was gotcha. there, I was there for four years and then I moved to New York, was up there, worked a little bit in the industry and realized my heart wasn't in it. Like there's mm-hmm. so many people out there grinding every day, every single day to, um, like, I don't know, man. I'd wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I got to go to this audition. I yeah, got to go yeah, do yeah. this. I realized it wasn't, I didn't wake up every every morning and like, mm. that's what I wanted. Mm. And then uh, I tried to figure out what I wanted. I got a bunch of survival jobs out yeah. there. And then um, I started writing music and I loved it. I mean, I, I wrote a little bit here and there when I was a kid huh. through high school, college and all that, but I never thought it was something worth pursuing that I could make money off of. But the older you get, you realize the less you care about the money and the more that you care about like what's going to fulfill you. Exactly. I mean, no, no, it, it, yeah. it is about the money. Don't get me wrong. No, but like, I understand. It's no. not about the feeling outside. It's more about the feeling what's your yeah. feeling inside. But, but if you're fulfilling yourself, then you you have more of a drive to get that money too. Like mm-hmm. if, if, if I'm feeling awful, I'm going to be less... Uh, motivated to go get that money but if i'm making some good music and i'm doing what i love to do i'm gonna find ways to bro it's just an addiction bro no, i'm just finding you. ways it's, to like, it's like a circle like yeah, one yeah, yeah. thing feeds to the other and then that other thing feeds to the other yep. and it's like full of happiness and fulfillment that there's no words to put into it yep. it's just un- it's like unbearably possible I oh no 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 but yeah um so i got into music uh that way uh into hip-hop specifically um one of my best friends, uh, Chris Felix, hopefully you watch this. Um, we went to high school together. Uh, I knew him back in like my acting days. Uh, after I moved up to New York, we met up. He showed me what he makes, and he's a producer. He makes like uh, hip hop. Uh, he's Haitian, so it's Haitian influenced. Uh, he loves jazz. He's he's like an incredible like composition guy. Mm. He's like great. Anyway, he showed me what he was working on. I was like, Yo, do you mind sending me a few of those? Like, I'd love to try to sing on them. And so. I realized I was more drawn to like rapping on the beats instead mm. of singing, like which is what my background is, is in singing. And um, yeah, first I was trash, and then I was super trash, and yeah. then I just kept on working on it, and eventually I sent it out to my friends, always ask them, like, yo, what do you think? Uh, give me honest feedback. And fortunately, all my all my boys were super supportive. They were like, this is trash, but this is what you need to improve on. Mm-hmm. And they gave me notes. They told me to study people. And so I studied the game for a while. And now I make music that's not trash. So That's big, having that support system, honestly. And especially in the beginning, because like, I heard something really big. Like, if you in the beginning stages of making anything, mm. getting the wrong answer from the right person can really fuck you up. Oh, yeah. And I was like, damn, that's no. so true. Because like, if you show a song to your mom and you're making it, and she says, I don't know if you can do it. 
That's big. Yeah. Well, no. Fortunately, I didn't show it to my mom. Um, <laughs> True. That's smart. <laughs> no, no, no. I uh, love my mom, but she probably immediately would have been like, nah, this and ain't And that would have crushed. Yeah, oh, you 100%. Known. Yeah, no, 100%. but like my, my boys, like in high school, I've always loved hip hop music. Like that's all I listened to. So I, but I never imagined that that's the type of music that I'd eventually make. True. Um, and so when I started making it, I sent it to my boys who sh- put me on to hip hop music back in the day. And no, they... I mean, I'm sure they were judgmental, but they weren't yeah, judge- yeah. like they didn't t- show me that they were judgmental. And exactly. then eventually, like after two and a half years of like working on stuff, putting stuff out, they were like, "Yo, this is actually yo." I'm showing this to people. I'm like, yeah. "Oh, word, that's that's how it is." Okay, bet. So then, yeah, um, that's pretty much where I'm at now. And now I'm just releasing music, music videos, trying to find I've that noticed, fan base, bro. bro. I've noticed. That's it. So I've noticed also that in your, only your Spotify, because I don't mm-hmm. know if you probably you know started before 2018 releasing music because mm-hmm. like your spotify you only have from 2018 yeah, it yeah, was yeah. an album i think yeah, yeah yeah step one step one yeah, yeah yeah and is that your only album that you have out so far yeah so it, it is i've had <laughs> i had uh i had an album that i trashed after that one so i had step one you trashed like you put it out and you no no trashed. no so like it was, it was something that i worked on with chris we okay. worked on it for like Eight months. It was really Travis Scott influenced, but I was also singing mm-hmm. on it. I really liked it. It was sort of, it was it was kind of like what The Weeknd did, um, but less poppy. So okay. it was like a mixture between Travis Scott and The Weeknd. And if The Weeknd rapped, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. No, I mean, sure. That's fire. That's no, fire. no, it, it was it yeah. was fine. It's just after. I didn't like the way that it sounded after we finished it. I went back to it, revisited it, and I was like, ah, a lot, half these songs aren't bangers, and I only yeah. want to drop good music. So uh, shelved it. There was also issues with, like, that takes a lot, bro. purchasing the beats, yeah. though, too. Like, uh, one of them, I waited too long to purchase the beats. A lot of YouTube beats that I found. Uh-huh. Um, one of them, they sold an exclusive on, and then the other one, the guy wasn't working with me. Like, I was trying. Anyway, yeah, so I scrapped that one. Um, but since then, no, I've just been working on re- on singles. You know, everybody out there always claims to know what the key to success is mm-hmm. everybody's saying singles are the new thing now yeah and like uh, what what is it the 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 waterfall release thing i don't know if you've looked into it what is that so oh. it's um a lot of people are doing it if if they have an album uh-huh. that is like maybe not conceptually but it's like they all fit together mm. you release one then three weeks later you release another one but you release it with the previous one so the previous streams go on to the next one and then three weeks later you drop the next one and then then you've you add the ones that you have on. Yeah, so like you're, if, you're doubling the yeah, fan base. I, yeah, in a way. well, well, like you're 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 getting streams every time on the album. So the album itself is counting in those previous streams from the single and grouping it in. So oh. it'll look like you're getting more streams. And yeah. I I don't know. I look into it. I don't know if you're. No, I mean, that but is no, no. It, it, it's, it's called like waterfall method. I found it from uh, or waterfall release something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah, if you look it up, you'll be able to find it. That's what I'm doing right now so brush strokes was one of the first songs on my waterfall release album that i'm working on now nice um yeah and then i've got another album that i've i have on ice and you you heard it when you first met me yeah that one i i'm working on with with another guy that one's on ice bro it's just a lot uh, i'm not gonna lie that first that was the first song i heard from you and yeah. i was like wow Thank like you. i'm not gonna lie i was <laughs> like this kid's about to blow up bro yeah well i didn't release it yet so <laughs> when but i do hopefully hopefully it goes. stay tuned because that yeah, thing hopefully. incredible like looney tunes for real <laughs> <laughs> nah but it brush soak so that song the yeah, lady yeah. song it's a remix yeah i saw there's like a remix yeah so i um the the original version of that song i uh i had on neighborhood legends with huh. you've met have you met chapman i4 chapman no maybe well anyway he's 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 uh a big player in in Orlando. Okay. Big player. Um no, I uh he's got a lot of connections in the city, a lot of pull. Uh great dude. I met him out like a few years ago and um every time he hosts an event, every now and then I'll pop out, show him love. He's one of the boys. And um hey. he was hosting a uh a performance, like not really a, a showcase, but mm-hmm. something like that. And I came up and I performed one of the songs. He was putting together an album and he was trying to put on like a bunch of independent artists in the city. And I performed it live because I hadn't recorded it yet. And he said, yeah. yo, my album's coming out in like three weeks. Can you get that to me? And I was yeah. like, say less. So I went to the studio, recorded it, sent it in, like got it mixed, tried to get it as quickly done as possible. Mm-hmm. And it was on the album and it was good, but I felt like there was something missing. Mm. So after that, we did promo runs. I was trying to get that running with that song. And then... um 
uh, I sent it to another guy that I happened to meet who super he's based in Tennessee, like very well connected with people. And he has like a few Grammy noms under his belt. And he said, yeah, well, you need to work on how you um, compose the entire songs. Mm-hmm. There's something missing here. I've got a guy who does electric guitar. You send it to him. See if see if he can do something to it. If you listen to the song and listen to the two differences, the biggest thing is the added guitar. Like, we we went back and forth on it a little bit, mm-hmm. added segments that we liked, didn't like, and it just improved the, the song overall. Uh, oh. That was a long explanation no, of the question that. That I love asked. that. No, no, I but love no, that. It, um, no, yeah, so the, the remix is basically the old one yeah. mixed uh, a little bit brighter, like I like the way that it feels, and the guitar is added. So it's just a little bit more quality. The other one felt a little bit more... Stre- uh, rushed when it was released. True. So this one I had time to sit back on, listen to it, digest, and yeah. True. Pretty who who played that guitar? Um, you, shoot, what's you know who name? it was? Yeah, I think his name's Adam. One second. Okay. I don't remember his his last name off the top of my head, and I have him saved as Adam, and then That's this guy's it? friend. <laughs> like I don't I have. You, well, shout yeah. out Adam, bro. Shout out Adam, bro. Um, I mean that I like the song a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank I like you, thank the, you, thank the you. cover. Yeah. Um, who made that cover? Do you make your yeah, covers? Yeah, yeah. So I, I painted. Yeah, no, I, I used to paint um, nice. when I was in New York. Uh, it's expensive, though. And uh, I, I realized, like any industry, it's about who you know in that field. That's how you get put on. Mm-hmm. So you could be the most talented artist ever. Actually, that's not true. If you're f- fucking incredible. Well, I mean, if you're Adele, yeah, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point, someone's going to No, no, no. You. Like, if Adele was just on the street, people would be like, yo, blow this person up. Because <laughs> just raw talent is yeah. just incredible. But no, with me, I was a decent artist. Um, I had a. I think you got that talent. Bro. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. No, I, I had a, a painting series where I was uh, painting the front with like abstract work, and then on the back of the canvas, I was writing words. So like, what the front was meaning to me, mm-hmm. and so that was. Um, I, I lost uh, a, a friend. I, I lost a couple of friends to uh, um, overdoses, and um, I just painted that around the time when I found out, and I wrote. Uh, I will. I won't go numb again i think that's what i I won't go numb again and i wrote that over and over again and when i finished it, i was like this is dope and i was just sitting in my room for like two years three years and then when i had the concept for the song that i wrote it thought you know what i'm just gonna put my own artwork out there Mm -hmm. yeah and And i love the song also i love the you know the concept that you were talking about Hmm. Uh, how would you find that inspiration to talk about that uh the inspiration to writing the song yeah um because i'm guessing it goes hand in hand with the cover oh and yeah like, what's yeah, it yeah. Saying? um so i've had unfortunately i feel like that's just every everybody knows somebody that has a substance abuse problem um uh hopefully you guys haven't had people that have passed away for it uh from it but um i have and i have people that are still dealing with issues with it and um the way that I write music sometimes is I have a good idea, like a good one-liner, and I'll write it down. And then when I'm writing music to to a beat, I'll put it on and I'll scroll through my notes and find something that I've previously written. And I'll think, yo, this works with this song. And then I'm pretty sure for this song, I wrote that first line and I just wrote the whole song within like 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, the lyrics just float out. Uh, it's easy to paint in large brush strokes. Um, and then I just, like, everybody just judges people based on what you think of them like Mm -hmm. okay i've i've met homeless people that i see on the street and like damn i i feel like i'm I'm just not going to talk to you because i the way you look or yeah no like the the way that you look i can kind of predict how you're going to act or the feeling that someone gets when they see someone but the thing is not to let you know your actions you know get judged by the you're judging yeah yeah, no no no, yeah judge them by their actions not the way that appear yeah no no, but that's that that's like the whole message of the song too and i was trying to make a more hopeful um message to the song uh together the hook is like together we'll shine we'll shine trying to get the shit right caught up in a riptide um east coast baby uh (laughs) if, if you haven't listened to the song you'll you'll get it after you hear it um but yeah, no, uh, it's hopeful. Um, running, 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 chasing after something. Yeah, no, just honestly, it, what I need is like one of those genius interviews where we go, yes, like bro. break it down lyric, lyric, one day lyric. trust. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, no, uh, I tried to make it more hopeful. It was just a stream of consciousness, uh, inspired a little bit about like, yeah, just that, pretty much. Uh, whenever you started making music for you know the first times, like recording and like, yeah getting into it mm. do you have like a friend that you like started making music with that was like you know maybe your engineer because i f- feel like as an artist your engineer is the person that you always spend time with yeah yeah. and they know you by heart because they know when you want to record or when you when you want to punch in yeah um 
Y- yes, there's. So it took me a while to find the a, an engineer that I liked in in New York. Um, so what, it was in uh, New York. Whenever you well, started? When, when I first started, yeah. When when I first started recording music, actually, no, it goes even further back on that. I worked on a cruise ship for oh, for a shit. while, uh, a German cruise. Cruising. Bro, I that's incredible. I, I have crazy. I've got crazy stories. <laughs> um, I but it's um, no. I, I worked on a. <laughs> I worked on a German cruise line for a while, and so um, on that ship, I there were a few great singers, and one of them, Bennett, incredible, incredible. Thank you. What, what is he? He's not Brazilian. Is he Brazilian? Shit! I hope he doesn't see this. Um, but anyway, he 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 moved to Germany. Uh, he he learned German. One of the most incredible. He he sings like Bruno Mars uh-huh. on a cruise ship. Speaks fluent German. Like he learned the language. He speaks fluent English. Fluent. I think it's Portuguese. I'm pretty sure it's Brazil. I'm, don't hate me. I think it's Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh, was he and there he, to sing? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was a singer on the cruise oh, ship. Okay, I okay, mean, okay. I was too. But gotcha, gotcha. um. He, oh damn! So you went to the cruise ship as a singer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you I, were there, like there was just, a show that I did. No, no, no. Bro, yeah. That's I don't want to get into that because that was not a good. I, it was. It was not the most. It was a lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I no, like you. the the ones who worked on the cruise ship with me knew how much I kind of didn't like mm-hmm. doing. And I think that was one of the reasons why I got out of doing acting and like theater oh, and all okay. that stuff was, um, yeah, I realized that isn't something I was built for that I enjoyed as much. But sure. um, anyway, first re- time I ever experienced recording was on that ship. He had in like one of the cabins under uh, uh, like below deck. He um he would have his recording equipment, all this other wow. stuff. Him um and DJ Dennis. So he had a whole Dennis. studio in the Yo, cruise. Th- th- they th- the DJ that was there and him in their own places. They had a studio inside their like bro. It, it is not. It's about like a half or a third of the size of this room where we sleep. Yeah. And they would have like a little cubby where they'd have their speakers and they'd have their laptop and their their recording and that's it, bro. Like wow. if <laughs> you that's watch incredible. Jurassic Park. Life finds a way, but yeah. like record it. Like if you really want to record, it'll find a way. So I learned a little bit from that. And then it all just started going up from there. When I moved to New York, I started recording with engineers, trying to find good engineers. Mm. Shout out Jamie. Jamie was like my first uh, engineer in New York that I really, really liked. Mm. So, yeah. What what makes a good engineer? Uh, experience and uh, man, a million things. Actually being good <laughs> at that mixing. Uh, so... Yeah, no, uh, their spot is, like, clean and professional, like, mm. like this, you know. Um, if it's, uh, if, if they're punctual, they don't flake on you, they're, like, up front with, like, what their rates are. But uh, that also goes on the artist, too, if you just need to be up front with what you need. Um, uh, yeah, how, how often they respond and if they're actually good at what they do. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, I, I'd say that. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And for like, let's say producers, who's your, you know, I'm not going to say your has to be a good producer, but like, you know, what makes a good producer in your eyes? Man. Um, Cause you're an artist. So like, well, you it, know. It, it just, it, I feel like it depends like what type of music you're going to put out to. Um, if, uh, what makes a good producer? Um, I was going to say versatility, but a lot of people make their bread and butter from, uh, just staying in their pocket of what they do because mm. like perfecting something. And yeah. Just... Well, I'm trying to think of an artist that, that every single beat that you hear is like similar, but also interesting enough that it changes. Um, I think JID is one of those artists mm. maybe. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, or JID. I don't know. Somebody's probably going to hate JID. the fact yeah. that I They're said that. Hate. Um, but yeah, no, uh, JID, I feel like a lot of his stuff, like a lot of the beats are off kilter, like, they're really, really interesting beats, but they all sound semi-similar. You know, mm-hmm. like the basses all... The hi-hats are always there. The hi-hats there. are always there, yeah. like all that stuff. Um, right now, there's a, there's a producer that I'm working with who's who is from Turkey, living in Germany now. His, cool. his name is Ismail, Ismail Jam. That guy's sick. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's sick. Unfortunately, I can't afford to get all the beats that I want from him. Um, but no, he's consistent, makes good-sounding beats. Um, yeah, 
Uh, what makes a good producer? Yeah, consistency. Consistency. Hey, there you bro. go. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's also what makes good artists too, and that's why True. I'm trying to be a good artist now. Um, every Definitely every getting there, bro. Bro, I'm trying. Every three weeks, I have it scheduled in my room on mm-hmm. a on a calendar. Every three weeks for the next like seven months, I, I have a single that I can release. That is really smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now it's about just trying to figure out how to film content while pushing it. Promotion. And now it's just marketing. yeah, pr- marketing and like figuring out the algorithm, bro. Yeah. TikTok, TikTok's a hater, bro. Like trust. Sometimes it likes you and sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Well, like, I, I, I had a TikTok, and there was a period where people were saying, you know, post three times a day. Three, three to oh, five times a day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I was doing that shit, I pulling out my hair. Bro, I, I wasn't... Bro, I was I was losing my mind doing that, and I was not focusing on writing any music. I wasn't doing anything else other than doing the TikToks. Yeah. And then, like, a month or two months after I was doing it, every day, it came out, oh, actually, one of my friends said, oh you should only be posting like three times a week because now you're flooding the algorithm and then the algorithm isn't going to know where to send your stuff. Like Mm. there's too many people doing that. So now it's just over flooded with content and it's not going anywhere. And then True. also, I don't know, man. I, I feel like everybody nowadays says that they know what's going on. Yeah. But nobody really knows. Nobody really knows at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I feel it's like attention. You know, it's like human yep. response. Like what do you respond to? Because I feel like it's all our attention span is so short now that yep. you have to catch them in like every frame it used to be in the first three seconds mm-hmm. it used to be in one second bro now it's like half a second no, now it's like every frame has to be like counted yeah. for well um yeah i i just started a new tiktok actually to try to figure that out yeah. um i i scrolled through all my old stuff and i'm just re-releasing stuff now. i mean you've posted a lot what was the biggest like tiktok you got uh the karen video I don't know if you saw that. Yes, yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, no. I think that was a, one of the only ones that I saw. Yeah, yeah. Because you were posting a, bro, a lot. Bro, I was trying to yeah. push that. Um, yeah, on, on TikTok, my so original what TikTok. what happened on that one? Bro, okay, so um, I perform over at UCF. Um, this is the video. I was performing on campus and a wild Karen appeared. Of course I am. You are a student? Yes, exactly. Okay, some random student right now is recording. And I told her already that I don't have, I don't give her permission yet. She's a black woman with white nail polish with, uh, with, um. Tell story. (laughs) No, but so I, I go out to UCF as one of the ways I try to like promote my music is I would give out free donuts to the students and be like yo follow me on instagram get a free donut i thought you were giving c- free cds bro. Like nah that. bro bro i'm I was not like peddling cds, CDs. i nah, know no, nobody does that <laughs> i don't know bro no no know. no D- donut cds they, they look about the same so i'd go out there with donuts um and i'd be like free donuts people like this is bullshit there's mm. no way this is free donuts i'm like you're right <laughs> follow me on instagram or follow me on spotify and you get a free donut True. and um i, I did, like the catch like you're right no, <laughs> it was it will like also it's like simple yeah. Exactly, it's simple. Um, a lot of people who doesn't like Krispy Kreme, like yeah. you know, shout out All Krispy Kreme. Hopefully, I get a sponsorship soon. One day, uh, one day. Hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I mean, hot. They're even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, bro, that's all I would do. I'd pull up with a hot and ready when Krispy Kreme like, donuts, light. bro, bro. <laughs> yeah, they, like you could eat three and be like, nah, this is nothing, bro. Anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, no, God, I have to cut back a little bit. <laughs> I'm trying you, to, I'm trying to work on the summer body now because, like, two yeah, summers yeah. ago, I said I was gonna get it and I did not. I feel like we all say that, bro, every year, and it just doesn't work. Um, no, but I, uh, I pulled up, did that, um, and I'm on, I'm on campus, I'm singing, I'm giving out donuts, and this one lady, it was like the 12th time I did it, she came up, um, did anybody invite you to come speak here? I'm like, no. And then she was like, shook. She was mad. And she was like, well, this is a private campus. And I was like, you're absolutely wrong. Um, <laughs> this is not, it is a hundred percent a public campus. That's yeah. why people can come on. Like anybody can just walk on this campus. Yeah. And she was, she didn't believe me. And she was like shook. I, I, I tried to see from her perspective. What she was trying to say was there was somebody the other day that was one of those protesters, maybe one, no, not a protester, like one of those overzealous, like maybe that's the wrong use of the word, but like, uh, Jesus lovers that mm-hmm. are telling people that they're going to hell. Oh, okay. Like I got you. I, I've, I've met a lot of love from the, 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 the Christians on campus. I don't want to not talking about y'all, but there was this one guy a few days before I got there mm. that she must've gotten worked up about. And a lot of people were protesting that person. So I think she thought that that's what I was doing. I'm like, gotcha. girl, I'm just singing. Yeah, I'm giving out free thing. donuts. I'm giving out water. Did you offer her? Water? I did. And she was <laughs> okay. like, um, no. <laughs> I said, okay, fair, fair enough. Um, she called the cops. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Did they the cops. do? I mean, they can't really do anything, right? Um, that was it. She was sure that they were gonna like throw me off campus, and it was cops that I'd seen because I'm out there consistently. <laughs> bro, cops and donuts. No, <laughs> bro, I'd given them a few. <laughs> like, I'd they're them they're a few. gonna get them, bro. It's Krispy Kreme again. Like, what cup does not like no, donuts. No, exactly. No, but the um, they, they pulled up. Yeah, she she was out of her. She was out of her element, bro. There I was no that. way she was gonna win. <laughs> um but yeah no they they walked up they talked they talked to her on one mm. side they talked to me and they're like did did you like have any physical altercations with her i'm like bro i'm just trying to give people donuts and water <laughs> yeah i'm trying to sing yeah. yo that's all i'm doing um fortunately i it got a little bit of uh traction um wish it would have gotten a little bit more traction on tiktok mm. but i'm gonna repost it soon on my new tiktok um bro you've got that's good smart, bro. posture smart. bro like my i'm try, just slouching like I constantly. exercise i exercise oh i don't i need to what need do you do exercise that. I walk. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I exercise occasionally. Um, the, I, uh, a friend of mine is a fitness uh, oh. instructor. Instructor, yeah, is, yeah. is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm meeting with him on Thursday. I'm really trying to get my uh, Your life together. <laughs> bro, I'm just trying to look sexy for my music videos. That's bro, the only thing. that's it, bro. I don't really care about I, anything else about bro, music Bro, I used to I'm try to look sexy for these women. Nah, bro, it's a music I mean, video. You know, I'm just focusing the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. The right. woman will come, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope. It, I, I was watching another like TikTok that you made in your mm-hmm. Instagram, and it was it said when you pay your promoter thinking you was actually mm-hmm. going to open for Frank Ocean. Yeah, is that real? Yeah, um, this was back in <laughs> in New York. Um, okay. th- there was a guy who reached out to me. Uh-huh. Um, said the account doesn't exist anymore. Um, obviously, um, followed a bunch of people. This was when I was young and dumb. Frank Ocean's coming to New York. I was like, oh, sick. And How I was like, you? do you want to? It was like three. No. Four three years ago maybe like right in the beginning bro i wasn't even good enough to get any acclimation it was just somebody trying to grift for money and yeah i I sent him through the money uh it looked kind of legit but this was it didn't look legit i was just dumb like that's all it is don't don't trust people that say that they're gonna put you on are you a fan of frank ocean so you were excited oh bro are you kidding me i was like maybe i can meet him maybe he can sign me like all this stuff you thought your breakthrough was about to happen bro that's a a long pants hey we're back we took a little break, went to the bathroom, changed some things, and <laughs> we're that back. sounded really <laughs> fucking really? suspect, bro. And some things, bro. What? No, change pants, bro. <laughs> just, well, he I just pants. changed pants, yeah. bro. I had to take a call. Exactly. I had to go to the bathroom. Money's calling. You know pants. the vibes. New York. You have a song called "This Is New York." Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs of yours. You Thanks, s- man. It's snapped. one of my favorites too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It. It'll pan like I'm locked in, and I'm like, woof. Yeah, man, snapping. Yeah, no. So tell me how would that track one down uh so shout out my boy chris felix i've talked about him too much now yeah. but uh no he's 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 the great man like incredible composition like so this was part of his album i'd love to meet um him. oh yeah Did, when you're in new york if i'm Ooh, there too bro yeah, yeah, yeah. i love new york and i want to go soon so yeah, that yeah. gives me a, a reason to go boom you're like i'll interview him there. yeah no no because no, i want to no. interview like not even like Everybody that makes music and just create. No, I'm I'm sure he'd he'd love that. Um, he actually has a spot where you might be able to interview him too. So that'd be cool. No, yeah, I don't. It would probably wouldn't be as nice as this set. Actually, it might maybe. Be. Well, anyway, <laughs> um, it was part of his album. Um, it, his album is also called "This Is New York." Um, but he he showed me the hook that he wrote to the song, and I was like, I want this. He was like, yeah, What? Yeah. And I was like, I I need to be on this. Yeah. And he was like, Okay. And so I wrote, I wrote the first verse fairly quickly. I think. Um, the second one, yeah, it, it was just a process through, I sent it to him, he asked me, or I asked him what he liked, and he said, change this. Okay, I changed whatever he wanted. But yeah, no, it, I think, like, the message behind the song, I'd have to look at the lyrics again, but it's it's just about, like, my experience of, like, living in New York, mm-hmm. and no, that's, uh, that. yeah, you know, people move to New York to chase a dream, chase money, mm-hmm. chase love, like, chase all that, and I tried to fit it all into the, the song, but, bro, the thing that blows me away is his hook, like... Dare to fall, dare to fly. Broke as shit, but we I, We don't sleep, we up at night. NYC, we on fire. I'm like, bars. Facts. Fucking great. I bro. like that. It's really, really good. Were you in New York when you recorded that? Like, uh, Funny enough, no. So it was Ooh. like the middle of pandemic. Um, okay. Like, I think it was a few months in. Uh, I'd written it during that. Mm-hmm. And part of it I wrote in New York. Part of it I wrote here. And then... Yeah, then we recorded it down here because he was like visiting family, and mm-hmm. I was moved down here. So during the pandemic is when I when I moved back down, uh, back here. So gotcha. and that's when we met. <laughs> crazy. That's it. Crazy. Yeah. Well, yep. 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 Um. So, uh, what 
other songs are you featuring in or no what other albums are you featuring in uh that like, like that i'm featured in yeah. or that I'm, okay that um, you want to mention like you know you're like hey this one this other one. albums like of mine or like of other people's of other people all right so i i recently had a collab with eris have you met eris or no no but i i saw that one yeah, it yeah, was yeah, like yeah. how to break, break up, up too yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah no um i met him when did i meet him I'm trying to think the first time i met that man has he been in the studio with me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I there's probably met him then well no no not 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 asylum um oh, okay, okay. It, i where did i meet him i think i met him at a I think it was the first time that I was singing uh, my brushstroke songs in front of Chapman. He was there too. Okay. And like I linked up with him. Good vibes, good energy. He sang a song too. I was like, he's snapping. <laughs> and um, then uh, I followed him on IG, checked him out. Oh, his TikTok's crazy, bro. Bang. Like 300K. Like wow. he's done incredibly well. Like he, yeah. he did a great job. Uh, How to Break Up, like that shit went viral because, um, yeah, well, because TikTok and like he, he caught his, his girl cheating on him. Ooh. And he recorded that shit. So that story's song real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that what a flex, bro. Well, I mean, flex, flex on that X, you know, exactly. like flex on them hoes. But no, the um, yeah, no, he he put that shit out. It took caught fire on Instagram, caught, caught fire on TikTok. Did really, really well for him. And so then he was doing like um, an open verse challenge, like everybody does. And since I knew him, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna send you something. I put it, posted it. He thought I snapped. I thought I snapped. And I was like, yo, do you mind if I if I do like. Part a verse part two on that and yeah. he's like oh yeah well because nowadays it's always about like creating more content and like using the content that you have and stretching it out as far as you can so mm. like that buzz he thought oh that'll help my buzz to continue as well and it's helping me with like That's monthly smart. streams That's too like, like getting that. some of his fan base yeah. so like honestly collabs is where it's at for for that sort of thing thanks yep smart talking about collaborations when do you learn to collaborate because collaborating with, collaborating with a lot of people uh where did i learn how to collaborate or like you know when did you i guess like pick that up um bro I, I i mean i feel like i've been doing that the whole time um oh. well it's starting from like just the beats bro like any beat that i get the the reason why i i tried producing i'm not good at it i really love seeing what somebody has made mm-hmm. and then me trying to like fit in and tell a story that they're trying to say through the beat like you know how you listen through some beats and they sound sad as fuck and you're mm. like do I, what, what do I want to talk about that's sad and, like, conscious or this and that? Like, yeah. I, I feel like that's collaborative in itself. Like, I, I, that's where it started for me. Man, I'm just trying to figure out how to, like, what sounds better for me. I'll, I'll, I just, I'll stay doing this. Yeah, hey. bro, like, I, I want to hear myself here and I want to hear it. But, um, <laughs> no, so, like, collaborating with, with artists. Um, if, if I lock in with somebody and I meet somebody and I check out their music and I, I like what they do, I'll pop out to, like, shows where they're at, try to, like, make acquaintance with them. And, um, yeah, I've, I've got a few artists that I'm, that I do want to work with that have been like, yo, we have to do a collab. But right now I'm like booked up with like all my, all my music that I got yeah. right now. Like I'm, like I said, seven months, I got every three weeks, I got a single drop in. That's exciting. I also have a, I also have my album that's on ice. Uh, my engineer, Mickey, what's up, Mickey heal up. Um, we were about, I don't know, like three weeks being done with the album. And then he got in a car accident. Mm. Not good. <laughs> it was not good. And, uh, man's was in the hospital healing up now he's he's doing better than ever well maybe not better than ever but he's gonna be better than ever and um yeah so that shit's all nice it'll be coming out soon hopefully after this album and these releases but yeah cool 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 um let me see what about you bro huh what about you uh, what yeah, what's, what's 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 what who who, do, who have you collaborated with damn i should have done research on you and like flip the script <laughs> nah, immediately bro, like, nah. no I, um, I, well i mean you got mostly... a new song coming out soon uh, yeah, actually. Let's, let's take a little break talking about me because because that's then <laughs> that's enough. Appreciate you, bro. I mean, <laughs> nobody asked about me. Yet. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I got. We're, I'm working on a on a music video, my second music video. Okay, cool. And and you're uh, shooting it in Miami? No, no, no. That's gonna be my third music video. Damn, bro. See, that's what you need to do. You need to like plan ahead and like while you're shooting new content, you need to be like prepping, releasing oh, the other 100%. stuff, bro. That it's just consistency. I've been uh, like on the content wave since yep. I was like 12. Damn. And I'm 21 now. I Damn. just turned 21 like a week ago. Congratulations. Appreciate you. You get but, Liddy? Yeah. Liddy like a titty? Not yet. That's for Miami. I was saving oh, money for Miami because okay. I'm balling the fuck out of it. Okay. There. Be careful. Trust. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Miami. Oh, where? Yeah. I didn't live there much, but I lived in Weston for like four years and shit. Oh, okay. I've been, so, <laughs> can I feel like. So wait, you were born there up until you were four? Yeah. So you were young jit and then you moved. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I moved to Ecuador. Okay. And then I stayed there till I was like till I was like ten or eleven. Okay. And then I came back over here to Miami. Stayed there till I was like twelve or I don't know, thirteen. 
moved to Ocala, where I met him. Oh, okay. Jeremy. Ocala. Yeah. yeah. You know where that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like That's a small near Gainesville, town. right? Yes. It's yeah, like yeah, an yeah. Hour from I have there. an mm, Never mind. <laughs> I got an issue, but we're good. <laughs> I, feel you. No, I, I have a lot of issues with Ocala. No, but did, did, do you but remember a lot, a lot of? Place. Do you remember a lot of Ecuador or no? Yes, when you were a kid. Yeah, that that I feel like gives me a lot of like my hard work and like because I remember a lot of stuff from Ecuador, seeing mm-hmm. like how because it is a third world country. Yeah, yeah, and like seeing that and like coming over here, I'm like, whoa, yeah, what bro, the fuck? It, it puts you into perspective, like the the shit that we take for granted. And like That's once cool. I'm maturing, especially now, I'm like realizing a lot of like my memories, like holy crap. Mm-hmm. I was doing that in Ecuador, and I'm, like, living the best life here. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, I'm like, I think I'm not there yet because, mm. like, there is, like, music, you know, billboards, whatever. But I have to be, like, conscious that I, everything that I have now is everything that, I, you know, I need. And, like, yeah, it yeah. fills me be now. Be content, but yeah. also strive for more. Exactly. Perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but, yeah, so when I started making music, it was with him, actually. I was saying. We started making music I was, like, 14. I, I wish we could just... T- turn it but J- jeremy's back there jeremy's uh, back there you I could mean, like put know. a little picture right here oh yeah then, then they did they do know um, uh, but yeah we started making music and that was when i was like 14 or 15 i was engineering but the funny part is that i started making youtube videos when i was 12 and then mr beast okay type of shit yeah <laughs> no i mean like i relate to mr beast in so many levels i have like 500 videos made in youtube oh shit it, this is without this channel this is like a new channel i started um yeah, so, like, I have a lot of fucking background in video and, like, editing. Mm-hmm. So, when I started making music, I didn't know nothing about music, but I yeah. knew I wanted to fucking rap because mm-hmm. of Logic. You know Logic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when I was sick one day, I tried to rap like him, and then I was like, oh, shit, I feel like I can rap. And then I started recording myself yeah. in the vid- in the video editing software, though. Yeah. Not in, like, an, aud- in an oh, audio, okay. like a DAW. It so, was so like that's a, how you started? Yeah. Because w- with that, you can just use, like, a... <laughs> Oh, shoot. <laughs> you shit. No, because with that, you can just use, like, a normal, like, headphones and yeah, stuff. Like the, yeah. the Air, Air... AirPods or yeah, something. Yeah, Anything, something. like... Yeah. Because it's just, like, USB mic, mm-hmm. and then you just put a headphones. Oh, oh you use the USB that's it. Okay, yeah, cool. Except at that point, I just bought, a, like, a Blue Ice Bowl, like a $50 mic, and I just mm-hmm. connected it. And we just started rapping, and I feel like at that point, we just fell in love with it, and mm-hmm. it just got better over time. Yeah. And that's where I feel like I'm at now. Cool. But yeah, we moved... No, I moved from Ocala over here when I was, like, after high school. And then when I was over here, I went to music school for, like, a year. And after that, I went to the uh, to the studio to intern for, like, a year. Okay. And then after that, I came over here, and then I started doing my own thing. And yeah. And this is that thing. This M- is that music thing. Music video dropping when? Uh, soon. I'll just say soon. that because I want to perfect the fuck out uh, of it. Okay, I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. But his music video is coming out soon. I mean, when this Jeremy out, again. check it out. 5%. Jeremy, I hope, I hope a picture just pops Ding. up. <laughs> Trust me, yeah, it's yeah. a fire video. I want to show you the video after. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would love that. to get some pointers from you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because I love your music video in New York. The first time we met, you showed me. I feel like you were, you know, doing your promo run oh, for that music video. wait, Nordic? Yes. Was that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out Steel so. OP. It was like sick, sick. At night, and yep. you were wearing like a jacket yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, but it was amazing oh 32 brisk wait is that the one the freestyle like the full freestyle or was so. it the uh the music video with i don't remember honestly brisk? okay but yeah. i loved it i just remember that was like bro the video and the audio combined that thanks, was like man. butter appreciate it but yeah you guys did an amazing job like for real thanks that man. inspired me so much to kind of go on my own video, music video run mm. i'm not gonna lie yeah because yeah. at that point i was uh, making music videos here and there for artists and I was like, where can I find inspiration? Or yeah, I was yeah. like, in that moment, like, let me see who I can look at for music videos. And nobody really, you know, that I knew. And then mm. that's when you came in the picture. And I was like, oh, yeah, really interesting. Well, damn, that's crazy that you're using me as this. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, no, I mean, I now mean, that I'm like thinking about it, I was like, I guess you, that was inspiration. You, you probably should have just looked at Cole Bennett, like straight, <laughs> I like mean, lyrical. That was like a that. big inspiration. Actually, yeah. one of my friends um, that has been in this interview too, or in this podcast, yep. um, he has like a thing that he tried to build it, like. Cole Bennett Mm -hmm. and it was really cool because he did it in high school Mm -hmm. and we didn't really we weren't friends in high school Mm -hmm. but I was in high school with him so I saw like the stickers in the walls around and I was like damn that's really inspiring and obviously he didn't know I was inspired by that Mm -hmm. but I don't know I feel like just that is very like cool like knowing that inspiration can go so far and you not knowing you know like you inspired me and I was like I I didn't even know about it and I'm like thinking about it like oh shit I guess that really like trigger the the thing of like damn i want to make music videos thanks man yeah Appreciate so it. No, how'd you how'd you go about that music video uh if, if we're talking about 32 brisk um i wrote a freestyle to a beat that a friend of mine made 
I was like, this is sick, but to do promo for it, it's just a freestyle. You know, it'd be cool if we just did one take walking down, um, I think it was 5th Ave in in New York. It was off the, the end train, off the 59th stop. It's just like one long strip mm. of um, road. And uh, yeah, I had this concept for a while. I went out there, like scouted it, practiced me doing it. And then there was a videographer that that I, I really was chill with. And yeah, was booked him, said, yo, let's try to do this. We did like six takes of the walk. Originally, we were just going <laughs> to, the walk, the walk. <laughs> Poland. Um, <laughs> sorry, my brain. I you like just, those songs, bro? Oh, bro, I it's hate catchy it, but it's fuck. catchy. Exactly. Like a- after you heard it, like the eighth time, you're like, mm-hmm. you hear that? To, uh, uh, right no, but th- there was some like, um, like really, really cool, classy musician who was saying, actually, it's an augmented fifth or some some bullshit like that. He's mm. like, it's actually very intelligent. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just little yachty being crazy. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, little boat, little boat, um. Now he's big boat, I guess, because he's huge. Like yeah. that. Anyway, he, is, uh, he should just go by Yachty, bro. He should just go by boat. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, bro. Just boat. Big boat. Yeah, Yachty. Low boat. Low Yachty. Or yeah, yacht. Or, I don't know. He should be a yacht now. Yeah, his yeah, name has yacht. always been Low Yachty. Bro, he's yachty. just yacht. Yacht. Yeah, he's a yacht. Yo, what's up, yacht? Sounds cool, honestly. That, honestly, yacht. Yo, like, that sounds fire. That, that, that's that's pretty. Good. Honestly, <laughs> when I meet him, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, you um, tell him. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the walk. So yeah, we we did five takes. What? Originally, we were gonna cut it all into different pieces and like splice it over. And then when we looked at it, the last take that we did, it was a clean take. Like the entire walk didn't mess up once. And so it's just a one take shot, thirty two mm-hmm. brisk. Um, if we're talking about the other music video, uh, Chris Chris Gonzalez, uh videographer based out of orlando mm. he's great he shoots a lot for gutter 100 and that's how i saw you gotta his, send me his info yeah yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah he, he's great um he's actually color correcting a music video of mine right now right. um the next one that's coming out for brush strokes i'm i'm trying i'm to excited do, for that bro, bro well, I, like, I really like that it's, song it's decent like the concept that i had for it i really wanted to go to like the beach and have my boy playing guitar and like okay. like really really luxe like shots slow-mo like on the beach and stuff but it's not in the budget yet and i don't have the time especially if i'm dropping a song every three weeks i don't have time to go out there do that shoot it edit it yeah but interesting yeah um we me and jeremy started because you know i have my own label i guess or i'm you know building my own label log my productions you know the vibes and a we're you know starting to make music videos and stuff i know you you've been making music videos for a minute yeah um Give me some pointers that you think, as an artist, how to direct a music video. How to direct one? Because as an artist, and you just book the direct, uh, the videographer, you're the rest. You know what I mean? You're yeah. the, finding then the editor, then making sure the spots that you're recording are cool, the concept. You don't have a writer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man. Because there's so many hats you have to wear, and well, I've noticed that lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really overwhelming. Um, if you look through my music videos, I've... I've kind of been the director for a lot of them, but then, well, yeah, I, I guess I have. Like, I'll find the the spots to shoot. I'll say this is the kind of shot I want, and then that's even the producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, first it depends on like what what the song is about, and what if if you have like an interesting concept that you want to go with it. Like, I I had an interesting another interesting concept that I wanted to do for Brushstrokes. Um, and have you seen that machine machine that like uh like bleeds oil and then it like scoops it back up into itself have you you've seen that yeah um so there's a video of this yeah there's there's like and yeah uh so the whole concept of it is it's bleeding out but it's like stopping itself from bleeding out and the oil that it's pushing back to itself feeds itself back into the machine so it continues to run and so i thought like that was a really interesting concept that it's just like you're bleeding but you're still trying to hold yourself together and so then I was trying to mix it with the concept that Billie Eilish had with her, like, crying tears. But I was going to have somebody in a bathroom who had just slit their wrists and, like, trying to cover it up. But, it, like, the entire music video was them trying to, like, cover up their gotcha, gotcha. their that. So I was trying to, like, draw inspiration. Again, I don't have the big budget to do, yeah, like, the sort of like, visuals that, that I want. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got just, like... Yeah. Bro, I've yeah. got, like, 100 ideas for music videos. That was really exciting. Um, but, no, for – for if, if you're doing, like, a standard music video where you're like, okay, this is a cool spot. I want to shoot this. I want to have these different angles. Just watch 
watch more music videos of like other people um you the best thing that you're going to do to learn if you want to shoot them yourself is just go out there and do it um or find somebody who's been doing it long enough in the game that is willing to work with you if you don't have a big budget tell them that that you don't have a big budget but like i respect what you're doing this is how much money i've allocated for this if you can come out and do that or try to meet them halfway just if you get the footage i'll edit it myself like i'm trying to learn like yeah yeah, yeah. there's ways to cut corners with it if you're just respectful and say yo just be honest yeah really- exactly well with with chris like he his his price point has gone up a little bit in recent years but like it's because he's worked with so many big artists and like now like as soon as your resume gets bigger that's what it is but yeah no when i'm scouting a spot i think of like color i'm thinking of like the angles that i want in the in the areas just go on a walk bro like mm-hmm. if if you're in this area like here let me <laughs> like if if you're any if i if i was downtown mm-hmm. like uh parts of the stuff that i shot for my music video if i'm downtown what am i looking for i'm looking for like a a parking lot like a parking garage i'm looking for like maybe an open field like over by the water um there's like a cool alleyway maybe that i can shoot of um just walking and looking i'd say just walking around with people and like figuring out where the light lighting is too lighting is super important if if you don't have like a good uh box light that you can bring out figure out the time of day that you want to be there it's just all logistics man yeah um i mean you know this it's just a million things that you don't think of until Until you're you're there there. and then you're like fuck i forgot this thing oh i wish i had a different outfit for this thing yeah no that that's why it's good to have like a producer or somebody that is your second hand man that knows and like remembers to pick up things that you you forget on your slack and then um when i started making music videos for the first time yeah i had to learn you know I guess by the hard way of, you know, oh, damn, I miss, I guess I need a speaker now. And then I had to go buy a speaker. Yep. I guess I need someone to hold the speaker and, you know, replay the song so I can focus on the shot. Mm -hmm. Got to get another person. Yep. And then you start learning. There's so many roles for just videos and concepts. There's a million things. Literally. Well, the the thing that helped, that helps me is I've got two phones. So I would always sync up my second phone. And if it's a song that's already released on Spotify, I just create a playlist and have that song on repeat like 30 times. Uh So I'm up there. Boom. I have it in my pocket. I know where it is. I just click to start it over again. Like, but yeah, no, it it does help. Yeah. All you need is like four people. Mm -hmm. If, if four of your homies want you to get your shit out and get it together, you just have to figure out a day that they're free and just, they show up. And if they're willing, if they want to be part of creative process, bro, sky's the limit. Like Mr. Beast, the reason why, again, shout out Mr. Beast. Um, the reason why he popped off is because he had like a small collective of people that he worked with every day, constantly, that were all willing to like build and like try to get to that level. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's hard. I mean, I bet like. I mean, finding Jeremy was the hardest, the, the most blessed, you know, blessing. Yeah, man. But it's the hardest thing finding someone else that yeah. can like consistently be there, you know? Yep. You, it's hard, man. Yeah. You, you, you just have to find people that can consistently come out and show out for you. Um, well, I know that, you know, it will come. I just have to be positive in, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, in, my, in my vision. And active about, like, what they want, too, from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. True. Cool. Um, so, have, um, I guess, like, working with others, how do you meet them in the middle? You know, have you had, like, have you bumped heads with people? You don't have to say their names, but, like, yeah, what yeah, are some yeah. occasions that are, like, you've learned a lot from this lesson? Um, A lot of things that I've learned, I've took the L on. Yeah. Where I tried to be the better person and um yeah there's two i've been burned by two v- videographers in new york mm. one of which i i considered a friend was going through like personal times like opened up about things about me and then when we had a disagreement about something he pulled that out of the back po- pocket and i was like i don't want nothing to do with you mm. the um like he was editing the music video, it crashed. And so I went over to his place, redid edits, it crashed again and lost all the footage. Like all the work that we did, I put in probably like four hours editing it with him. And then after that, I was like, bro, just send me, send me the footage. That's all. And yeah, that guy I will never talk to again, like actually crazy. Yeah. Paid him a decent amount of money. Should have gotten a refund because he ended up not doing it. Not doing it. Yeah. Um, there's another one <clears throat> who I paid up front a uh, friend of a friend of a friend who said that they were good. I should have, when recommendations come, if somebody's recommending somebody, take that person's first recommendation. Don't take the person that that person's recommending and then that person recommends somebody else. Yeah. Don't ever do that. That's what I learned the hard way. 
in New York, I had a friend who like knew an editor who was like complex, incredibly well off. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm down to do it. And then like a week before canceled on me and like said, oh, but this other person can do it for me. And they're equally as good. Not as good. Mm. Not only that, filmed it kind of unpleasant to work with, but I kind of smiled through it so she wouldn't know. Um, and then I waited like four months after we shot it. Like I, yeah, I, 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 I told her like, oh, I, I want it by like, I want a rough draft by January, yeah. May. I got a rough draft. It was in 1080p. It was shittily done. And I was like, yo, like I need a refund yeah, yeah, or yeah. like partial refund. And I want the footage complained with me, went off on me, like saying that, I don't know why you're switching. Just crazy stuff. Honestly, we can cut some of this. It's just me complaining about it. Just the lessons to learn is, oh wait oh you said about disagreements yeah no the the disagreements or just like lessons you've learned yeah like the biggest... lessons i've learned contracts like okay. make sure even if even if they're a friend unfortunately try to figure out a way to put a contract that doesn't make them feel at risk or you feel at risk you can find those contracts anywhere online um do a down payment yes but also have a clause in there saying that if if specifically if they don't do what you ask or if it's not up to par like i i've always tried to include things where it's like oh yeah, i'll pay another 50 for like another edit like I'll pay some more to get it better done, yeah, yeah, yeah. but nah, just contracts, bro. Like, unfortunately, if it's not like a family friend or somebody that you, you've known for years, that's like trying to help you create something together that you're not paying them. People that you're paying try to always keep contracts and stuff, mm. um, unless it's something smaller that doesn't really matter that much to you. But yeah, contracts, contracts, contracts. There was this one time when I started making music videos. Actually, the first video I made, I think, or like one of the first videos I made. Yeah. Um, I was recording this one guy I made at the studio, and we made a music video. And when it came time about paying, I was because I, was, you know, I started my first, you know, business, I guess, at that yeah. time. So I was figuring out how I was going to do with the pricing. So I was like, okay, fifty dollars down payment, and then a hundred when I'm done with the video. Yeah. Just, you know, let's see how that works. Yep. And that was the first client that kind of fucked me over because he paid the 50. And then when the music video was done, I showed him and he was like, oh, cool. Thank you. That's it. And and then he started arguing of like, oh, man, I don't have the money right now. Well, and then, damn. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, so you don't have, a, you know, $50 right now or like $100 right now? And he was like, no, nah, I only have 40. I can send it to you. And I was like, you know, we we had an agreement and la, yeah, la, well, la. yeah but what was it over text or did you say it verbally? I, no yeah we like met and everything and i even like when i met him i was like okay so 50 now and 100 later and he was like yeah i got you la, la. yeah yeah no contracts bro no then i learned well i mean now i'm learning you know yeah yeah unfortunately yeah. there's if everybody was a decent human being you wouldn't have to do it unfortunately a lot of people are trying to cut corners and they do slimy shit like yeah. unfortunately also hip-hop Hip hop yeah, hip hop pulls thing. in a lot of scammers, a lot of people that are trying to hustle and figure out yeah. ways to jip other people. And it's unfortunate, but that's just like That's the world we live in. Yeah. I feel you. Um that's another thing about like being like nice. You don't know if people are using you for niceness or like yeah. because they generally appreciate that and respect that. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Me complaining too, bro. No, <laughs> no bro, I, was, I, know, I was rambling, like, bro. It, bro, it's okay. I can be your therapist. It's <laughs> fine. Like <laughs> I mean, honestly, like I s I'm not gonna lie. When I saw you, I was like, bro, when I, or when I met you, when I yeah. met you, and I was like, oh, bro, this man's like, a, you know, I see a, a lot of uh, a lot of in me within you. I don't yeah. know how to fucking say that, but Pause. you know what I mean. <laughs> For real, bro. Pause. I definitely said it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, But, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I relate to, like, yeah, 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 no, I see that. And I was like, damn, I'm sure he has a lot of, like, information and knowledge. And when you told me, oh, yeah, I went to New York, and I, you know, spent some time, and I recorded music, I was like, yeah. damn, bro, that's a big dream of mine. Yeah. Um, so I... I can I can definitely get a lot of knowledge and information. Yeah, man. I'm I, if if you need yeah. any question, just shoot them. I'll let you know. I appreciate. Pause. You, bro. Fuck, man, <laughs> this is not good. Uh, yeah, no. Just that's ask me hilarious. a question, bro. I'm 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 just here to help. I just want everybody to succeed. And like you. that's it. Um, I mean, just whenever you start making me, uh, you know, shows and whenever you start yeah, performing, yeah. I know that you've been performing your whole life, basically. Yeah. Uh, but did you feel a difference from performing like? acting and then switching yeah, yeah, to yeah. music yeah yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like this a lot better um with acting you have to consciously be somebody else whereas when i'm putting on my music i don't have to worry about fucking up lines or anything because it's just me like i've written these songs i've practiced these songs a million times i go up there bro it's like a weight off my shoulders like i always mm. wanted to perform i realized i always wanted to perform but 
I always want to perform my own stuff. Like I, I feel like I've got my own stuff that I want to put out, like mm. my own messages, my own things to learn from. And I think I'm a pretty decent singer. Yeah. So like I, I like to think I'd do a good performance. Yeah. Try to, yeah, no, like one of my bigger inspirations, I'd say for like live performances is like Mac Miller. Like oh. Mac, bro, live, peak Mac was, pause, was really, really good. Like, you seen him live? I've seen videos. I've unfortunately never like. Me neither. It's a bummer, man. But um, no, he he was one of those people I was hoping to meet. And then like, bro, I've got this bad habit of like anytime I compliment an artist that I really, really like or I try to put somebody on, they die. And I'm like, mm. not good. Like Mac Miller, like three days before he, he OD'd, I was like telling somebody about him. I was like, yo, Swimming, one of my favorite albums of all time, yada, yada, yada. Find out three days later he OD'd. Same thing with, like, X. I was like, yo, X is, like, the voice of this generation. He's going to be as big as Drake, I think, one day. Like, mm-hmm. his fan, he's got a cult following. Three hours later, man's, like, mm-hmm. gone. The new is Juice World too. Like, I don't know what it is, bro. I just need to stop talking good about people. I, I feel you, bro. That's I remember when X, eh, that stuff happened, I was, like, I was still a kid, bro. I was, in my first job, I was 16. And I was, like, in a restaurant. And I was in my job. And then I see my phone, like, notifications and instagram and i'm like what the fuck and i feel like that was the, that was the first time i one of my favorite rappers you know yeah died when i was alive and i was like oh dang i've always heard of like tupac dying and like yeah, yeah. but it never happened to me before and that was like the first time and it really shocked me in like so many different yeah. that was the first time i felt like dang but yeah honestly i i think i think rap groups honestly rap might group. might be the wave though to be honest like bigger like bigger rap groups that's like they're like the new boy bands of our generation i think do you ever have a rap group or no? No. <laughs> I um well right now or did I'm, you ever I'm, have a group? Like a collective or something like that? Right right now I'm part of a collective. Ooh. Uh Lonely Thugs. It's um Eris, um BBE, Draco, Tony, uh Tony Rose and me right now. Eris? Eris. Uh, don't love Eris. He's he's the guy that uh gotcha. I did how to break up to with. Oh yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. That guy. Um and then Draco, I don't know if you've met him. Or I've heard seen, of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're all like Orlando natives. Oh, I, wow. They're they're all like good performers live, and like we we've met up and we like try to think how to break the matrix and actually get on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's so. That's the collective I'm part of. No, but Babytron. Uh, really or cool. Mega Megatron. What? Baby ba- Tron. Ba- Babytron. Yeah. Baby <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> Baby Megatron. <laughs> Baby Megatron. Yo, I'll I'll definitely check out check out his stuff though. Jeremy but, Tron. When Jeremy starts rapping like him, I'm like Jeremy, Jeremy Tron. Tron? <laughs> Jeremy Tron. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, do you freestyle? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna ask you to freestyle. I was like, did you see Trust. like the sweat, like the bead of sweat <laughs> come down my face? I'm like, oh no, I I only do writtens really. Oh, true. Um, I I freestyle occasionally when mm-hmm. when I'm in the studio to get like a different flow. Um, but no, I I end up saying shit I don't mean when I freestyle, and I so that. like. I was, I've heard, yeah. how many people have you heard been like, oh, yeah, I got a Glock in my car? I'm like, bro, if we go to the car right now, you do not have a Glock in that <laughs> bitch. Yeah. Like, you don't have to lie we'll to find me. Pennies. No, but like, and then they'll be like, ah, oh, swimming in women. I'm like, bro, you have one girl that you've dated You're, for you like three life. years. Like, you've had kids, bro. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> what was the question? What was what the question, Jeremy? <laughs> you like baby Tron? bro i don't know baby Tron. <laughs> no nah, one day oh one freestyling day. that's what it was oh yeah freestyle. yeah yeah no I, I i don't freestyle really i don't I, freestyle it, for free um so uh, question music culture from florida and new york what is the difference from in your um, pov man there's so much bro mm. that there's so there's so many differences but like in your experience from living in florida orlando and new york where'd you say new york what uh new queens york? astoria oh okay uh it, it's a great place to live or was I mean, it might still be good, but um, I wasn't really living with a with the music scene out there. Like, if if you want to be a part of the music scene out there, it's Brooklyn, bro. Like, BK is the spot to go. Like, I know people that have studios out there. I've I've been to um, a bunch of the clubs out there. I pre- I performed at like three or four places. I'm trying to think of the names. Baby, what's it called? So baby, baby, bye bye, something like that. There's there's um anyway. Astoria Queens, where I was, not not the not the not the move mm-hmm. for to, music. To, to make music. I mean, there there's another artist out there that's actually really good. Um, um, all right, well, I'm not gonna spend any time trying to find her name. <laughs> um, but no, there's um, there's huge differences between here and New York. I feel like in New York, the people that they put on in the music scene can vary somewhat. Mm-hmm. Right now, I feel like Florida, for the most part, the hip hop scene that they're putting on is a lot of similarities. You know, there's, like, a lot of Southern Florida rap. Like, there's not a lot of, like, melodic, conscious rap that's happening. 
True. I'm trying to see, but that that's also true in both spots. I don't think that there's anybody that I would compare to Mac really mm-hmm. that's coming out in New York or in Florida. I think there's a lot of artists that are trying to emulate that in in Orlando specifically, but nobody's putting them on because that's not what's spinning in the club. Mm. You know. Yep. Um, but I feel like YouTube helps that because like the attention yeah. span. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's all about doing fine. <sighs> I don't know, man. There's like a million issues that I that I'm like thinking of that you see me thinking of in my head. Um, there's like so many conversations to be had, like what's actually popping, what's on the internet, like who can actually bring people out to their shows, mm. you know? So who I can sell tickets. Exactly. Yeah. I think if somebody's popping on TikTok, they might try to have a show and they only sell like 20 tickets. Like people mm. don't actually care about them, but. I don't know. That's the reason why I try to go out and do the donuts at UCF. Like going to college campuses is probably the best place to get people to listen to your music. It's the same age. Well, like yeah. I, I think also people are open to listening to things. That's true. Um, at, around that age, I, I would also think high schoolers. But you can't just like pull up on a high school campus. Yeah, like that'd kinda, be. That's, that's I'd weird. be like, that's kind of weird, man. Yeah. Um. No, but I I pull up there. Um. You can do the same thing in New York, I guess. But so the difference between New York and here is just the style of rap. Right there is like drill. Yeah. Um. All the artists that have been on that are from New York, they always like release stuff like Jay Z. Um, Was your well, you know, one of your fa- or your favorite rapper from New York in your taste? My favorite rapper from New York in your taste. I'm not saying the best rapper. I'm saying in your taste. Mine, I have, fuck. There's so many. Jay Z's like, you know, up there, obviously. But oh, Mob Deep's from Queens. Oh, there's so many people. I mean. No, Shout out Mob was, Deep. <laughs> Hip hop was born in New York, so yeah. Like, um, <laughs> so many people. I don't know, man. I love Biggie, too. Oh, Biggie. He was the first person that I heard jazz and rap. Really? Yeah, because, like, I don't know. I was a really young kid, and I was listening to a Gangster's Paradise a lot. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that was, like, in 90. Yeah. And I wanted to see what other music was in the 90s. And then I was like, okay, Tupac. And then that was the biggest thing. Right next to him is Biggie. So I was like, oh. And then out of the both, you know, both of them, yeah. uh, Tupac's Dear Mama resonated with me so much because i love my mama and i make when i, when <laughs> I, love I my mama. yeah when i make when i make <laughs> yeah. music and i write music yeah. you know moms come out and say so yeah it, but biggie had such a flow and he was like hitting every every pocket yeah with every syllable so nicely i thought that was fine wine honestly yeah it was perfectly made like 10 out of 10 i'm no it's it's <laughs> incredible sorry I'm, I'm just tripped up because i'm still just i'm listing i'm listening through all these Countless songs artists, right now yeah. in my head. I mean, that was probably really bad. Or like Brooklyn. Let's say Brooklyn. Because <laughs> like... Pop Smoke. Oh, that's a good one. Bro, I recently, like... Uh, I recently got into him. No, I... It's really a shame, man. It like, is. Like, Pop Smoke, I think, was about to be next level, too. Um, he was acting, bro. He was incredible. I mean... Did you see the movie? Oh, the, the basketball one? Is like balling or No, I, I, the, 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 the Asian guy. Yes. Ah, no, I, he I was, didn't see it. Possible was just, a, I think he was an extra, not an extra. Well, he but, was like a villain, right? Like he was yeah. like fighting against that dude. And he, I mean, that character, he played it amazingly. Yeah. Honestly. Well, it, it looked good. I just, you know, social media, there's a million things going on. So I yeah. saw it and was like, oh, I'll eventually see it. And then I never did. Question. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of uh, acting experience. Yeah. And you went even to school for that. Yeah. Um. How did Pop Smoke did in that movie? Because I, oh, think- I, I haven't seen the movie yet. Oh crap! Yeah, yeah no, no, oh, I, yeah, I, I only saw the previews, yeah. but I was like, "Yo, or this that is preview. good." Yeah, no, the preview was good. I'm, what I'm really looking forward to is seeing Jack Harlow in uh, White Men Can't Jump. Is that yeah, the yeah, remake yeah, that yeah. they're making, bro? I'm, I'm excited to see it. I saw some of the clips that he did on SNL. Man's funny, bro. Like yeah, he's naturally Jack funny. Harlow, like naturally funny. I, I can't see why he wouldn't be good at acting. Um, wish I need to see the Pop Smoke. Yeah, thing. but um, yeah. um boy. Because yeah, I think it's you know it's good, but I don't have no experience yeah, yeah. in acting. But wait, did, did you watch uh what's that new Netflix show with with Snoop Dogg in it? It was it was like the vampire one. Did you watch that one or no? With Jamie Foxx. With yeah, with Jamie Fox too. I haven't. You haven't seen no. it yet? No, but like so there's like a I I wish I could make a list and like huh. rank all like the best rappers as actors. I that'd be a funny thing to do. Yeah, that would be Tell like me. what are you the best rappers? Mac actors? Miller was in was in Scary Movie with yes, Snoop, <gasps> like with Snoop when, when they I took remember. out the guns. Yeah. Oh my god, that was an so incredible good. scene. So funny. Um, no, I'm trying That's to think. A classic what other, movie. I'm trying to think what other actors rap rapper actors. And I'm not gonna lie. When I saw that movie, mm-hmm. I didn't even know who Mac Miller was. Because I was so young at the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was like, so you know, me watching it, I was like, oh, that's a you know, uh, whatever yeah, guy, yeah. and then. 
growing up, oh my god, Mac Miller, and then watching the movie again, I'm like, what in the world? That guy was Mac Miller this whole time? Yo. Um, Incredible. Wait, there's... So, you may be like me. When I grew up, I didn't have a lot of internet ex- access when I was... My mom didn't so. let me watch a lot of TV because yeah. she thought it would make me stupid. Did you listen to... <laughs> she never like, let me watch Spongebob or anything. <laughs> Joke's on you, mom. I'm dumbass anyway. Um, <laughs> did you listen to... I'm trying to look at like mixtapes because there was... There was a mixtape that they released for on Spotify recently that was Max, Mac Miller. Because he had... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, with Schoolboy Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was only in SoundCloud. Yep, that's and it. I was like, no, Bruh. bro, I I, I had Pablo. never heard of that. So when they dropped it, I thought it was a post a posthumous posthumous yeah. uh, post communist whatever. Yeah, whatever that big word is, <laughs> that um, I thought they released that, and I posted that on TikTok. Was like, yo, this new Mac album is so good, and people were like, is this a joke? <laughs> it was like, yo, I didn't know that he yeah. dropped it because I've, I there's just so much Stuff, music to yeah. like digest. Like I just never I never came across it. People roasted me online for that. They're <laughs> like fake Mac Miller fan. I was like, yeah. bro, I never did a deep dive. Like, I, I, I don't do a lot of deep dives on artists. I feel like a lot of people are like that. Do you I'm, have SoundCloud? Uh, not anymore. No, That's no, no. why. Uh, I only found out because of SoundCloud. Because I just put Mac Miller leaks, no. and then that was one. Or unreleased, and that was one, and then yeah. another one. But, yeah, that was, that, that album was incredible. No, it, it was, I was like 10 out of 10. I was like, this is incredible. It's, <laughs> bro, I was saying, it's giving like, kids energy but like with a modern flair and yeah. people were like are you stupid and i'm like maybe <laughs> out of the kids project goals for fairly well because that's an that's of, I, of opinion, Matt yeah. swimming hands down no hands in out of in the kids oh in kids yeah no the spins probably my Miller. favorite song on that spins true yeah. and you said swimming is your favorite album oh by mac 100 percent. yeah so that was like an instant re- mm, no 100 percent. so there what was your second or like why 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 that album from, makes it so great in your opinion uh i think I consume music very selectively unless it gets, unfortunately, unless it pops out of nowhere and like starts popping off on social media. I don't know how people genuinely find new music. Like if, if I find a new artist, I'll, I'll sometimes do a deep dive, but I'll only listen to that song or like a few other ones with Mac. It'd been a minute since I listened to his music. Self care came out. I heard that song and I thought the mix, like I was listening to it in headphones, the mix, the messaging, the music, the whole accompaniment. Everything about it was perfect. There was a beat switch through it. I was like, this is immaculate. Then I was doing a long drive. I, I was going up to Gainesville, I think, and I was driving. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to give the whole album a listen. A lot of albums when you listen to, I, I felt good after I listened to it. Like, it was one of those albums I listened from start to finish. And at the end of it, I was like, huh. Like, I felt good, hopeful, like I'd gone through a few things, like listening to it, gave me idea- ideas for songs. I'm pretty sure I came up with brushstrokes, like I wrote It's Easy to Paint in Large Brushstrokes from when I was listening to that album. Mm. Like, there's a lot of songs that I got some inspiration. I didn't steal any of the lines, just want to make that clear. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I got a lot of inspiration from it, and I felt whole after I listened to it. Um, there are a lot of albums that I listen to, and I feel like, Damn, I'm about to compare Jack Harlow to, to Mac Miller. But, like, Jack Harlow's album, Come Home, The Kids Miss You, that was the newest one, right? Yeah, that was an incredible album. No, it was good, but it was all just bangers. Like, it was throwaway bangers, feeling okay. Like, you know what it was going to do. Like, minute and a half songs, a few of them. His album felt, like, a little bit, like, therapeutic. It was, like, the culmination. It was the most perfect way, unfortunately, that he passed. But it was the perfect way for him to end on like a high note for me Mm. as like one it meant so much to him as an artist it meant so much to me the whole messaging like in in the whole scheme of the world that was like the most hands down most incredible album that he's made and it's so honestly it's so sad that it came out because he was working on it yeah well you know before he passed wait wait so so it released after he passed or so he was working with a really big producer at the time i saw a whole like documentary on this on youtube oh okay Uh, he was working on it with another big producer and that big producer was like very impressed on the talent that he had yeah and they were working on it he passed and then the other producer finished it by himself and then they put oh that's swimming i thought that was the uh the other one i believe it's swimming but okay i mean okay because i'll, I'll, I'm I'll, not I'll sure. look at, no no you, you may I be right i'm not i'm i'm, oh. I'm if i'm wrong circles i think is the one that maybe that that was the posthumous posthumous that's the word there we go i figured it out um 
But yeah, no, that's uh, we talked about Mac for a while. I love Mac. R.I.P. Mac for real. R.I.P. Mac, bro. A bit. So growing up, what are some of your artists that you were <laughs> attracted to a lot? Um, the like hip hop or just artists? Just artists so you know, growing, growing up, up, growing up, like for it's me, funny. Michael Jackson. Oh yeah. Boom. Oh, he's incredible. Um, no, I listened. <laughs> growing up, we when when I'm when my dad would drive me to school <clears throat> in his red pickup truck that is now mine, he would have mm. a cassette tape player and all we had was like Madonna. Like that was the only cassette that we had in that car. So like the, the like a virgin, like that whole album um, or the song on that, in that album, like all those songs, that's all we listened to in the car. But once I got to like middle school or high school and I got like my own MP3 player, it was a Pandora MP3 player, I think something like that. Um, and I went on the hip hop playlist. I'd listen to Lil Wayne, wow. um, Eminem, obviously. Um, I mean, if <laughs> Eminem, <laughs> bro, I've seen obviously. that meme of you, <laughs> bro, that is hilarious. I'm like, oh, people oh, are comparing Eminem, Eminem bro, or Mac Oh my Miller. god, I, I love, I love your type of hip hop. Oh great, I also love MGK, like yeah, Eminem, like all meme. the yeah, yo. Honestly, it's uh, that was that one was of my top meme. tier I'm like not gonna TikTok lie, comedy. Like, 10 thank out of 10. you, thank you, thank you, thank. And then yeah, no, but um, I think it was mainly them. M- mainly just Eminem, Lil Wayne. I listened to a lot of Drake when he started getting big. True. Yeah, th- those were like my biggest inspirations. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, Hell what yeah. about you growing up? What um, was your biggest inspiration? So the first, so I was in Ecuador, and in Ecuador, uh, I feel like just seven straight year- biggie. Yeah, no, because like seven years old, I was living in Ecuador. I feel like that's when I started getting conscious about life and my first memories with them. Oh, I just got conscious like two years ago. <laughs> so, and I found an uh, iPhone in the floor. And it was like one of those, not an iPhone, a phone in the floor. And it was like one of those like cheap Nokia that had like the snake the game. The ones that never break. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The indestructible Literally. Nokias. And yeah, it yeah, has yeah. like one headphone jack and a charger. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was looking for uh, games to play and I only found two songs. I would say the story. And I found Gangsta's Paradise. Mm. Which R.P. I forgot, man. I love that man, fucking forever. And um, Wiz Khalifa, Black and Yellow. That's funny. Those two songs. That's hilarious. And that, and that was like Black and nine, Yellow. Incredible. Eight, riding my bike with those two songs on Black repeat. and Yellow, Black and Yellow. Literally, <laughs> like imagine that. And I was vibing the fuck, bro. This was this was the first time my life was introduced to hip hop ever. Yeah. And I was yeah, bro. Like, I'm never gonna this? forget this. What is this flavor? Literally, and then Incredible. after that I came over here, and then I got into because over there I don't really have like you don't have, you know you have to have money to listen you know want to listen to the music that you want to because yeah, you cause only you pay listen for to the, the wife or yeah. the the yeah yeah so you only listen to the radio in other words yeah, so yeah. I was listening to a lot of Miley Cyrus because that was like Party in the USA that Hands was a big song I my song bro oh yeah. and and Ecuador was a big big song I mean globally yeah and then I came over here and then I started getting to rap Tyler the Creator Logic G E C mm-hmm. We're like the three first rappers I fully d- dove into my sixth grade, seventh, eighth. Lo- Logic, Logic was a huge. I was a huge fan of Logic for for a while there. Um, mm. I mean, he's he's still good, but he's like retired now, right? Or something? Retired, not retired. Yeah, yeah, well, like, like honestly, these rappers would be making so much money off of Twitch. Like, it's crazy. yeah, they they kind of comp. You know, they think about it. They're like, uh, in one album, I have to invest so much money to make because mm-hmm. music videos clearance. Because once you're up there, you have to worry about oh, clearance yeah. by so many levels. Yep. <sighs> Incredible. Like, we were talking about Baby Tron has a sample of Michael Jackson in his, in his latest album. Woof. And I'm like, it's in Spotify and everything. And he, and he said with Empire. So, like, I wonder how much oh, there was probably, he paid there, well, for that. Or exchange. I don't know. I wonder how that bro, happened. I, I'm just wondering if... If they're, he's like, yo, just take seventy percent of all the money I make, or just a hundred. I mean, I would honestly give bro, it. Bro, well, like, I mean, it's it's probably. Well, like the whole remember the whole Juice World controversy, like Wait, that that dreams? one song, yeah, 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 yeah. And the guy made like four million dollars yeah. from from that. Yeah, I think it was a little long. more. I think it was like twelve. 12? I don't know. It was, I know it was millions. Yo, he had to pay man. because yeah, I learned this in school. It's really big. Uh, normally, producers they notice something blowing up and they're like oh i used that loop or you know i made that loop and they wait for that song to get really big and then so because if you sue whenever it's small or like starting to blow up you might get a million or two but uh, you know 
producers know or, or like you know some you know people they know try to that. come afterwards to get the royalties but dang that they really messes royalties. up the artist a hundred percent bro it's like they, 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 they think they're in the clear they're making all this money they're spending all this money and then out of nowhere they get smacked and they're like i mean now what do I do? if that i mean at that point i mean at the same time he did get all the recognition yeah. and you know he followed up with an album and then another album yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he is yeah it, it just but you know if you catch lightning in a bottle you never know if you're going to catch it again unfortunately you know what I mean? That like if, deep. if, yeah. if, if no, no, I, I if I write the biggest banger of the century and I just so happen to have like a Drake sample in my song and it blows up and then he takes me to court, I get lost lawsuits, but I never make anything that is as good. It's sort of like, um, what's his name? Lil Xan. <sighs> Lil Xan, bro. Facts. That one song, what was it? Oh, what's the Germans? You know this. Betrayed. Yep. Betrayed yep. was a vibe, bro. Like everything, it was a certified video. Hit. I mean, it was because the, of Cole Bennett. Yeah, That's well, but like bro. also the song itself is catchy. Like it the, is. the song is catchy. <laughs> I got. I mean, it's that. it's ignorant as hell, but like it's it's a great song. Music video was fire. It, like that kid, the whole blow up, like you know, planning that was perfect. The marketing because his name and then the topics and then like the effects of Sans. And yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I mean, it, it perfectly. That music video was perfect for him as an artist too. Like it, everything just met together and just created something incredible. They definitely the stars align at that point. Yep, yep, yep. And that's big for like music. I feel like music videos you have to just wait until the stars align because you can make the best music video. Well, but but then so somebody else who inspires me is uh, Coda the friend. I love him so like, much. He's he's got great like he makes good music and his music videos like the initial concepts that he did to him. are crazy. so good, bro. I listen he's, like, to literally, he has like two million. F- listeners yeah or like something like that he's not that big, bro i listen to too much music i listen to too much music too. like i watch too much too many music videos i watch too much music um jet wait 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 go to the friends of something wow cool. lately he's been a big inspiration for producing and because i've been producing now for like three years yep in my own beats i've been making them for like a year and a half maybe yep because i'm not trying to honestly you know when i was young making uh, started making music mm. i wasn't trying i didn't have money to buy beats and i didn't even know you had to buy a beat then I learned that you had to buy a beat, and I learned how expensive they were. Yeah. And I learned this when I was like 16, 17. And at the time, $250, it is a lot for a 16-year-old. So I was like, yeah. let me just learn how to make beats or yep. see if I can do it. And then I kind of not perfected it, but I learned a lot, and I fell in love with that skill mm-hmm. as well. And it goes hand in hand, and it feels like I got two hands in the steering wheel now. You know, Except for one. But one, one is fine. That's true, bro. Or two. Just the knee. Have you done that? Yeah, bro. You don't even need hands, to <laughs> yes, be honest. Facts, facts. I did that on the drive over here. I was eating. I was like, and it was a stick shift, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Use my legs to, no. Nah. Um, anyway, cool. Hell yeah, bro. Well, I mean, I feel like. Did, did we cover everything? Yeah, I feel like that's oh, it, bro. Uh, okay, appreciate you. Well, um, oh, wait, wait. I have one more question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, Last, good. I always ask this everybody in one question before they leave. Oh, yeah, bet. What message do you have for the world? Damn, that's a lot of pressure. It's not, you know, don't put, it's not a deep thing. That's but a lot of pressure for the, the last The first question. thing that you, you think of. What, wait, wait, what, what for the world? Message for the world? Yeah, or like, you know, if you want to give a message to the world, what would that be? Oh, man. It doesn't have to be deep. But now, now like, I don't want to like, you, you know what I mean? Like, oh, man, now I got to put a lot of thought into it. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, whatever, like, I, I say that and like, nah, whatever but like, I comes do in <laughs> Uh, nah, just, uh, I don't know, be, be, be open-minded, be patient, be kind. Try yeah, to be, man. at least. Oh, yeah. No, wait, I got something better. Yeah, bro, it's go off. If, go off. No, nah, self, try to self-reflect mm-hmm. on the shit that you're doing. Mm-hmm. If you're not trying to embed your money, your mental health, your body, or anything like that, you're slacking because somebody else is doing it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Don't be a broken person. Boom. Yo, I appreciate you so much for coming by. Appreciate you, bro. Hope to have you again next time. Yeah. Any songs? A single coming out very soon, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you're dropping a single every three weeks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ibiza Freestyle is coming out the 11th. Um, mm-hmm. Music video for Brushstrokes Beat Remix is hopefully coming out this week. Okay. Um, the 11th. So this will come out uh, the 11th. So perfect. Oh, the 10th so literally tomorrow Tomorrow. (laughs) hey there you go perfect no uh yeah so that's dropping uh check out the rest of my music if you like mac miller frank ocean khalid type vibes this last this song that's dropping tomorrow is uh 
I, somebody dared me that I couldn't sound like make a Drake sounding song, and I was like, "Say less." So I did that. <laughs> yeah. I went to Ibiza for my birthday, um, and I wrote a freestyle when I was there. So I shot part of the music video there. You know, tax write offs. You have to yeah. figure out ways to like. But like, I'm still trying to figure out how to make it. Like, you 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 just have to be careful with the way that you're doing it because you have to say why it's necessary for your business, and your business has to be making some sort of a profit for you to deduct whatever you're deducting. So. I feel you. But we learn all the time. Yo, we're going to figure it out or we're going to be in jail. That's true. See you in jail, buddy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Peace, everybody. Stay healthy. Appreciate it.